Hey everybody, welcome back to the Calibrate Tools channel. And today we're gonna to talk about a device, a tool that every homeowner should have. Every homeowner should know how to use this. It's a caulking gun. So stick around and I'll see you guys right after this. Okay guys, before we talk about the caulking gun itself, let's talk about caulking and what exactly is caulking. So caulking usually come in tube shaped containers or cartridges like these right here with the pointed nozzles, or they can come in a spray can like this with the straw attached that you can use to spray the caulking out. Or they can come in a spray can like this. Now this particular brand says you can use it in a caulking gun or you can use it you know, with the straw like the last one. So this doubles as either or. Interesting. And you've probably seen caulking come in squeeze tubes like this. Interestingly enough, they also have caulking, like the one in this squeeze tube right here, that's clear. You know, you can see right through it. That can come in handy. Here's another example of caulking in a tube that's clear as well. Now, caulking is usually made up of a silicone compound, but it can come in other forms like spray foam. You just saw the spray can a minute ago. It can also come in a latex form, a rubber form, or even an oil form depending on what you're sealing. It's great for sealing or waterproofing structures where there are cracks or gaps between materials that would otherwise allow air, water, or any kind of moisture to get in. Think of doors, windows, or even bathrooms where moisture tends to live. It can even keep insects out. Just know that all caulking is not the same, especially when it comes to cleanup. Some are water-based, which you can use around doors and windows, and you can use water to clean up the excess. Some are solvent-based, like spray foam, which are good for large cracks, but you need a solvent like lacquer thinner to clean it. And then you have the silicone-based ones, where you can use a dry cloth to clean those up. And if you don't have a dry cloth, you can use mineral spirits as well. Okay guys, so let's talk about the caulking gun. Let's get into this. Now, I went to Home Depot to look for some more selections of caulking guns, but guess what? Because of the supply chain issues and a lot of the ships sitting out on the ocean, they don't have any. Can you believe that? They have tons of caulking, but they have no caulking guns at all in the Home Depot I went to. So I have a standard caulking gun that I've had for a while sitting around. So we'll use this one to show us how everything works though it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of the caulking gun that I would have liked to have shown you. You know what, you guys don't deserve that. Just because they're having supply chain issues that's out of our control, it shouldn't mean that I shouldn't go the extra mile to go out there and get you what you need so you can learn about these caulking guns. And that's exactly what I did. So guys, I got some caulking guns right here and they're all pretty much the same as you can tell but they got a few minor differences that we're gonna break down in a minute. But the first thing we wanna do is talk about the parts of a caulking gun. So this part of a caulking gun is called a handle. This is the trigger. This part right here, this is where you lay your caulking, okay? This area right here, this whole portion is called the canister. This metal rod here with the circular metal plate on the end is called the plunger, okay? That's what you pull back. And when you squeeze the trigger, it goes forward pushing the caulking out of the tubing. This portion right here is called the hook, and it's really just an extension of the metal rod, an extension of the plunger, and you use it to pull the plunger back like that, okay? And then you have this hole right here. What is that for? Well, if you notice on the tubing, you have a plastic nozzle that's pointed, okay? And that's sealed, nothing's coming out of that. That needs to be cut with a scissors or a knife, but on the caulking gun itself, you have this hole that you can insert the tip into, and when you squeeze the trigger, it comes down over that hole. Can you see that? Now that portion of the trigger that comes down over that hole is pretty sharp. It's sharper than this edge here. It's made that way, okay, to cut the tips, and that's why this is called the tip cutter. So you just insert your tip in there, squeeze the trigger, and it cuts it. The last part I wanna show you on the caulking gun is this part right here. It's kind of been hiding underneath, right? This is the puncture tool. And you use this to puncture the seal that's inside this tip here. So once you cut the tip with the tip cutter, which is this hole right here, you use this puncture tool to puncture the seal inside, okay? That's what that's for. 
And once you break the seal with it, you just fold it back in because this thing is pretty dangerous. You don't want to poke your eyes out or anything like that. And you won't be able to do a good caulking job with this thing pointing out past the nozzle, right? Now, anybody who's used a caulking gun knows how messy it can be. Why is that? Because once you finish caulking your bead, the caulking gun is still applying pressure to the tubing, causing the caulking to still ooze out of the tubing, even though you're done. For example, this style of caulking gun is an older model. It's called a ratcheting caulking gun. So if you look at the rod here on the plunger, you see these serrations. So when you pull the rod back, you would have to flip the hook 180 degrees so the serrations will be underneath on the other side. That's the only way that the trigger can engage the rod, okay? And when you finish caulking your bead, you would have to flip the rod back again, 180 degrees, to disengage the rod from the tubing, and you would also have to pull this back. That takes time. The few seconds that it may take to do all that, you've already oozed out a lot of caulking from your tubing, you know, and that's a mess you gotta clean up. So that's the older style of caulking gun. It's called a ratcheting caulking gun. And that's this right here. On this style, you have the tube cutter right here. It's not down here, right? It's up here. And you also have your puncture tool on the side here. So once again, the time it took to disengage the plunger and pull this back, you've already made a mess. Okay, now this model right here is a slight improvement over the ratcheting model. Now, this has no serrations on the rod. It's a smooth rod. And you don't have to pull anything back or flip anything over. But in order to retract the plunger back, you have to press this lever right here, okay? But you also have to press this lever again to release the pressure on the tube so it won't keep pushing caulking out of the tubing, causing dripping. And the minuscule amount of time it takes to press this lever, caulking still escapes from the tubing. So it's not exactly drip-free. Remember this guy? This guy's called a drip-free or dripless caulking gun, meaning that you don't have to press any levers, you don't have to twist any rods, it automatically disengages itself from the tubing once you release the trigger. No need to worry about oozing caulk with this one. This one is the easiest caulking gun to use. Like I said, you don't have any other task to do except release the trigger. And I wanted to show you guys this one. This is a extra large caulking gun. It's used to accommodate 13 inch caulking tubes like this adhesive right here for subfloors. Before we start caulking, we want to use the tip cutter on the caulking gun, that hole right there, to cut the tip on the nozzle. Now some caulking guns, the standard ones, don't have this right here, okay? So you can use a knife or a scissors to cut the tip here. So let's go ahead and cut the tip. Remember, you want to cut the tip small because if you don't know what size you're gonna bead, it's better to cut smaller than bigger because you can't get smaller, but you can get bigger if you cut small. Then you wanna take your puncture tool to puncture the seal inside the nozzle. All right, guys, the first thing you wanna do when you're getting ready to caulk is you want to pull the plunger all the way back to the rear of the caulking gun. Then you want to take your caulking and place it into your canister, the rear side first. Falls right in there. Some say place it in nozzle first, but you may find that difficult. So whatever way works for you, as long as you get it in there. So once it's in there, you want to make sure that it's firmly in place, okay? Right here, you can see that it's some slack going on. So you want to squeeze the trigger a little bit to push the plunger up against it so that it doesn't move. So you wanna make sure that you start caulking at a 45 degree angle and you wanna squeeze the trigger slowly. Once you ran your bead, you can actually take your finger and smooth this down. And then take a dry cloth and wipe it down as well. Oh, look, I made a mess right here. Well, what can you do? Hey guys, if you got some value out of this, it was a quick tutorial on how to use a caulking gun. Yeah, there's more to it than that. But do the research if you like. Hit that subscribe button if you got some value out of this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.